Hello students, a very warm welcome. Today we will be starting with a new topic P block elements and we will be taking lecture 1 of this. Guys, uh, P block elements is basically group 13 to group 18, right, in the periodic table. So group 13 guys is the boron family, 14 is the carbon family, right, 15 is the nitrogen family, 16 guys is the chalcogens or the oxygen family, group 17 is the halogens, right, which is basically fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine, right, and then group 18 is the noble gases, right, uh, helium, neon, argon, right, uh, these noble gases, right. So all the noble gases over there, right? I hope you've understood this guys, right? Apart from that guys, we'll be taking this chapter in a way. For example, we'll take up the boron family first, right? So for example, boron family consists of boron, aluminium, right? Gallium, indium, thallium, right? So we'll be discussing the properties of this group, right? Group 13, which is the boron family, right? After that, we'll be discussing group 14, group 15, group 16 and so forth, guys, right? So for example, when we are studying group 13, right? In group 13, we'll be talking about the various uh, physical properties and chemical properties, right? Uh, we'll be talking about the various important compounds, right? For example, if you're discussing boron, right? So then we'll be talking about something called diborane, right? We'll be talking about borax and so forth guys right so this is the way we'll be taking up this topic so let's get started all right the first thing guys group 13 elements which is the boron family as I told you it contains boron aluminium right gallium right indium and thallium right boron guys is typically a non is a, it's a typical non metal guys right Aluminium is a metal though it has certain non-metallic tendencies which is shows in similarity to boron guys right just like boron right aluminium shows certain tendencies just like boron right then gallium indium thallium right are almost exclusively metallic in character guys this we know guys as we move down a period the metallic character increases right so gallium indium thallium are almost exclusively metallic in character right you'll expect that as you move down the group right as you move down the group you'll expect that the metallic character will increase and it does increase right so gallium in indium thallium almost exists exclusively as metals right so they are almost show exclusively metallic character guys electronic configuration over here the outer electronic configuration of these elements is ns2 np1 right of course ns2 np1 right the outer electronic shell configuration we are talking about right I hope you've understood this guys, right? So guys, uh, we know that the S orbital gets filled first, right? If there are available F orbitals, then F orbital gets filled of the, I mean, first guys, the NS shell gets, I mean, the NS orbital gets filled, then N minus 2F gets filled, right? Then N minus 1D gets filled, right? And then finally NP gets filled, right? So in case of these uh, group 13 elements guys uh, this ns and np will be there guys so for instance right uh, whenever the f subshell is not available then it will not be filled the d subshell is not available then it will not be filled in certain cases it might be filled but one thing will stay constant is that in the final shell right i mean the outer shell if you're talking about right it will be ns2 right whatever right uh, ns2 and then np1 right for example if you're talking about boron then it will be 2s2 right and 2p1 right this is what we know guys right i hope you have understood this guys and i'll move on to the next thing atomic radii right on moving down the group for each successive uh, member one extra shell of electrons is added and therefore atomic radius is expected to increase right atomic radius of gallium is less so atomic radius if you're talking about boron between boron and aluminum now because you know extra shells are getting added you would expect right so boron is definitely less than aluminum right but guys what you'll see is that the atomic radius of gallium is less than that of aluminum right so basically what happens is it's like this right this is because additional 10 d electrons offer only poor screening effect for the outer electrons right although a new shell is getting added but because the d orbital that is getting filled the three d, d i mean the n minus one d orbital that is getting filled that is only offering poor shielding guys right poor screening effect right so to so the uh, 
pull will be more in case of, on the outer shell the pull will be more right of the nucleus in case of gallium right than in case of aluminium that is why gallium has a lower size than that of right lower atomic radius than that of aluminium right i hope you've understood this guys right after that guys uh, the in, nu the nuclear charge as i said right is more in case of gallium consequently the atomic radius of gall gallium is less than that of aluminium right so there is a significant difference right about 8 picometer right which is large enough if you're talking about atomic radius nice right i hope you've understood this guys next up i'll talk about ionization enthalpy right ionization enthalpy values are expected to form general trends do not decrease uh, smoothly down the group they do not decrease smoothly down the group right the decrease from b to al is associated guys with increase in size so from b to l you'll expect right so from b to l the atomic radius increases right the atomic radius increases so you know that the ionization enthalpy guys will decrease right because the you know if it's i mean the outermost shell is farther away from the uh, nucleus guys the nuclear pull on the electrons will be lesser and ionization in the enthalpy which is basically the amount of energy required to lose one electron right so that is basically ionization enthalpy so ionization enthalpy guys will be more uh, for boron than for aluminium right because aluminium has a greater size right the observed discontinuity guys in the ionization enthalpy values between aluminium and gallium and between indium and thallium are due to inability of the dnf uh, or electrons guys which have low screening effect to compensate the increase in nuclear charge right so guys what happens is right so for example if you are going from aluminium right to gallium right so gallium right the number of protons has increased from aluminium to gallium right but the electrons that got added were also added in the d cell shell right or for example in case of indium and thallium they were also added in the f shell guys right so what happens is that now the nucleus has a stronger positive charge right but the screening effect that it has you know it has to offer right the d and f orbitals they are not able to offer that they have low screening right no low shielding right so that is why guys uh, this uh, you know uh, this this smoothness right this decrease i mean they are expected to decrease smoothly but it does not happen guys right this so between indium and thallium and aluminium and gallium this does not because the, in of the inability of dnf electrons which have low screening effect to compensate the increase in nuclear charge guys the sum of first three ionization enthalpies for each of the elements is very high guys uh, so basically if you're for example forming aluminium to aluminium plus right and then from aluminium to plus to aluminium two plus right and then from aluminium 2 plus if you're forming aluminium 3 plus guys these first three ionization enthalpies are very high i mean a lot more energy has to be provided so for i mean it's it becomes very very difficult for them to form right it, but it does form sufficient if sufficient energy is supplied right al plus 3 for example al plus 3 is able to form right because ultimately it will be able to get a, a noble gas configuration guys right i hope you've understood this guys next up guys electronegativity down the group guys electronegativity first decreases from barium to from boron to aluminium right and then increases marginally right and it then increases marginally right this is because of the discrepancies in the atomic size of the element which we've already talked about guys right chemical properties oxidation state and trends in chemical reactivity due to small size of boron right the sum of its first three ionization enthalpies is very high, right? This prevents it to form plus three ions. So boron plus three ions are difficult to form, guys, and force it to form only covalent compounds, right? So this is not able to form, right? So boron, guys, is not able to form ionic compounds, guys. It is only able to form covalent compounds, right? It has a strong non-metallic character also, as we've discussed before. So it is only able to form covalent bonds, right? So for example, if you are talking about, let's say, BF3, right? So you, you must have heard this, right? Uh, organic chemistry, guys, this is, you know, used as a Lewis acid in, in a lot of cases, right? So this BF3 boron trifluoride over here, it has covalent bonds, right? 
and force it to form only covalent bonds as we discussed but as we move from barium boron to aluminium the sum of its first uh, three ionization enthalpies of helium is considerably decreases i mean it's still high as we studied in the last slide right but from boron to aluminium it's still considerably less guys right therefore aluminium guys is able to form aluminium plus 3 right aluminium is able to form aluminium plus 3 and because aluminium is able to form aluminium plus 3 guys it is able to form alcl3 guys right for example let's say alcl3 right so which is which has ionic nature right this the bond between al and cl in this case guys has ionic nature but guys again uh, polarization and polarizability guys all of them will also play a role right we've talked about this fajan's rule and everything guys so there will be uh, you know there will be also covalent character between the bonds of al and cl in this case in case of alcl3 for example guys right i mean much more than was let's say for mgcl2 guys right or uh, let's say nacl i hope you've understood this guys and i'll move on uh, to the next thing however down the group due to poor shielding effective nuclear charge holds ns electrons tightly responsible for inert pair effect and thereby restricting their participation in bonding as a result of this only p orbital electron may be involved in bonding this is the reason why guys right again poor shielding effect effective nuclear charge holds the ns electrons uh, tightly right the ns electrons are held tightly and only guys the p orbital electrons are able to participate right this is this is why right gallium indium and thallium right they form both plus 1 and plus 3 oxidation states right so normally you will expect them to form plus 3 right because you know there are three in the outermost shell right ns2 and np1 we talked about this right the electronic configuration the outer most shell electronic configuration ns2 np1 so you'd expect them to form right three uh plus 3 right for example you you expect them to you know give away three uh, electrons and in that in that case form plus 3 charge right but, but because of the poor shielding effect right of the d and the f orbitals right in case of uh, uh gallium indium and thallium what happens guys is that right uh, the nuclear charge has increased so it will be able to hold the uh, s ns electron right the outermost shell s electrons it will be able to hold and the p orbital electron will only be able uh, will only be able you know to participate right to be given out right uh, it will be involved in bonding that is right so both plus 1 guys and plus 3 oxidation states right will be formed right the relative stability of plus 1 oxidation state progressively increases from heavier elements right uh, so basically uh, this uh, thallium right indium gallium right so these have a more tend a stronger tendency right so thallium has the strongest tendency to form a plus 1 oxidation state so thallium uh, has the highest tendency for forming a plus 1 oxidation state right followed by indium and then gallium guys i hope you've understood this guys thallium the plus 1 oxidation state is predominant and plus 3 oxidation state is highly is highly oxidizing in character right in thallium plus 1 oxidation state is predominant right and plus 3 oxidation states are highly oxidizing in character right the compound in plus 1 oxidation state are ex ex expected from energy considerations are more ionic than those in plus 3 oxidation states right so when for example if i am talking about let's say thallium right if thallium forms let's say thallium guys forms tl right cl guys right this will be more stable than let's say when it's form tl cl3 right it will be more ionic in nature right not stable it will be more ionic in nature in trivalent state guys the number of electrons around the central atom in a molecule of the compounds of these elements example right will only be 6 guys right the number of electrons around the central atom in a molecule of the compounds of these atoms in the trivalent state will only be 6 right i hope you've understood this guys and i'll move on such electron deficient molecules have tendency to accept a pair of electrons right to achieve stable electronic configuration and thus thus they behave behave as lewis acid right so when you we were talking about organic chemistry we discussed how this bf3 alcl3 and so forth they act as lewis acids guys right they have a tendency to accept a pair of electrons because 
they are electron deficient right they are electron deficient and therefore behave as lewis acids the tendency to behave as lewis acids decreases with the increase in the behaves right increases with the decrease decreases with the increase in the size down the group right bcl3 easily accepts a lone pair so bcl3 bf3 right all the all of them right uh, from ammonia to form right bcl3 dot nh3 over i mean right over here in trivalent state mode of the most of the compound being covalent are hydrolyzed in water right the trichloride or of on hydrolysis in water form tetrahedral right moh whole 4 minus species right aluminum chloride in aqu aqu acidified aqua solution form octahedral right so this octahedral geometry is obtained when aluminum chloride is oxidized guys right when aluminum chloride is oxidized this oxide octahedral geometry is obtained over here and for the remaining trichlorides guys right when they are hydrolyzed they form a tetrahedral geometry right i hope you've understood this guys and i'll move on so you know now that they act as lewis acids which is very very important and about the tetrahedral and the octahedral geometry they show right so aluminium shows an octahedral geometry i hope you understand when it is hydrolyzed that is right next up reactivity towards air right boron is unreactive in crystalline form right when it is in crystalline form it is unreactive right aluminium forms a very thin oxide layer on the surface which protects the metal from further attack right so whenever aluminium is exposed to air so that is why aluminium and all guys is used for example for for long lasting things right like for example you know if you are making aluminium wires right aluminium wires are very very you know favorable because you know when it is exposed to air so what it does it forms a very thin coating of al2o3 aluminium oxide guys right alumina now this when this coating is formed of alumina this further pre this prevents further oxidation guys right so oxidation happens for a little while it stops due to the forming of this aluminium oxide right because it deposits right on the aluminium and th thus protects it right right from further oxidation from further attack amorphous boron guys and aluminium metal on heating in air form b2o3 and al2o3 guys right respectively with dinitrogen right at high temperatures they form nitrites right so these two reactions are important the first one when these metals uh, are treated with oxygen and heated they form e2o3 right in the un in i mean this should not be in the crystalline form right if you're talking about so these are i mean if you are taking talking about boron this should be in amorphous form right this should be in amorphous form not in crystalline form right uh, over here when it reacts with n2 it forms nitrides right it forms nitrides i hope you have understood this guys so boron will form b2o3 in the amorphous form and aluminium will form al2o3 guys these are the oxides right these are the primary oxides that are formed i hope you have understood this guys for boron and aluminium moving on reactivity towards acids and alkalis right boron does not react with acids and alkalis even at moderate temperature but aluminium dissolves in mineral acids boron does not react with acids and alkalis Bo uh, aluminium dissolves in mineral acids and aqueous alkalis and thus shows amphoteric character thus shows amphoteric character aluminium dissolves in dilute hcl and liberates dihydrogen right dilute hcl i mean aluminium dissolves in dilute hcl and you know uh, liberates dihydrogen so this dihydrogen is liberated over here as you can see in this reaction guys right aluminium when reacts with right boron does not react with acids and alkalis so boron does not show reaction aluminium when treated with dilute hcl liberates h2 hydrogen gas is liberated right uh, dihydrogen that is when it's treated with an alkali guys right however concentrated nitric acid renders aluminium passive by forming protective oxide layer on the surface right so when we are talking about treating aluminium with uh, nitric acid right considered nitric acid which is a very strong oxidizing agent it will oxidize it to form al2o3 very very quickly and when this al2o3 is formed uh, right this will be uh, this layer will be deposited and further oxidation will be prevented guys right uh, it renders basically aluminium passive right forming protective, protective oxide layer on the surface aluminium also reacts with alcohol al aqueous alkali and th in this case also it liberates dihydrogen guys 3h2 is liberated right and this guys over here is formed right 
टू एन ए प्लस ए एल ओ एच होल फोर माइनस गाइज दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स राइट सोडियम टेट्रा हाइड्रो एक्साइड एलुमिनेट गाइज इज फॉर्म राइट टू आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस गाइज एंड आई मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट थिंग रिएक्टिविटी विद हेलोजेंस राइट रिएक्टिविटी टूवर्ड्स हेलोजेंस तो हेलोजेंस वी नो गाइज फ्लोरिन क्लोरिन ब्रोमिन राइट आयोडीन एसिटीन राइट सो वेन इट सब्जेक्टेड टू देम गाइज देन इट फॉर्म्स द ट्राई क्लोराइड राइट टू फॉर्म ट्राई हेलाइट्स राइट दे फॉर्म ट्राई हेलाइट्स एक्सेप्ट गाइज टी आई आई थ्री इज नॉट फॉर्म राइट थेलियम ट्राई आयोडाइड इज नॉट फॉर्म गाइज राइट सो ऑल ऑफ देम आर फॉर्म राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम देम ऑल ऑफ देम आर फॉर्म राइट बोरॉन नेक्स्ट आप वील टॉक अबाउट एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ बोरॉन राइट बाय द रिडक्शन ऑफ बी टू ओ थ्री विद मैग्नीशियम राइट बी टू ओ थ्री विद मैग्नीशियम राइट सोडियम और पोटाशियम इन द एबसेंस ऑफ एयर गाइज राइट वेन बी टू ओ थ्री इज रिड्यूस्ड गाइज राइट यूजिंग मैग्नीशियम राइट सोडियम और पोटाशियम इन द एबसेंस ऑफ एयर राइट नो एयर वी शुड राइट नो एयर ओ एयर देन बोरॉन इज ऑप्टेन विद एम जी ओ राइट सो बेसिकली एम जी इट सेल्फ गेट्स ऑक्सीडाइज एंड इट रिड्यूस बी टू ओ थ्री टू गिव बी राइट आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस गाइज नाउ गाइज प्रिपरेशन ऑफ बी टू ओ थ्री हाउ इट हैपन्स इज गिवन इन द फर्स्ट टू रिएक्शन राइट इन द फर्स्ट टू रिएक्शन द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ बी टू सो दिस इज गाइज दिस एन ए टू बी फोर ओ सेवन इज बेसिकली बोराक्स राइट दिस गाइज इज बोराक्स राइट वेन दिस बोराक्स इज ट्रीटेड विद डायल्यूट एच सी एल इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ वॉटर गाइज दिस गिवज यू हाइड्रोबोरिक एसिड ओवर हेयर दिस बोरिक एसिड ओवर हेयर राइट एंड एन ए सी एल इज ऑप्टेन वेन दिस एच थ्री बी ओ थ्री इज हीटेड गाइज दिस गिवज इट्स एन हाइड्रस ऑक्साइड राइट सो एन हाइड्रस ऑक्साइड ऑफ एच थ्री बी दिस एसिड इज बोरिक एसिड इज बी टू ओ थ्री दिस बी टू ओ थ्री इज ऑप्टेन नाउ वेन दिस बी टू ओ थ्री इज ट्रीटेड विद एम जी इट गिवज बोरॉन गाइज राइट सो दिस इज हाउ बोरॉन इज एक्सट्रैक्टेड गाइज राइट सो फॉर एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ बोरॉन गाइज वी फर्स्ट नीड राइट सो बेसिकली दिस इज प्रेजेंट राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन यू आर एक्सट्रैक्टिंग बोरॉन बोरॉन विल बी प्रेजेंट लेट्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ बोराक्स राइट सो फ्रॉम बोराक्स वील फर्स्ट प्रिपेयर एच थ्री बी ओ थ्री फ्रॉम एच थ्री बी ओ थ्री वील गेट बी टू ओ थ्री विच इज इट्स एन हाइड्रस ऑक्साइड राइट देन फ्रॉम बी टू ओ थ्री वेन वी रिड्यूस इट यूजिंग अ मेटल राइट लाइक मैग्नीशियम पोटाशियम और सोडियम वील गेट बोरॉन गाइज आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस गाइज एंड आई मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट थिंग रिएक्टिविटी टूवर्ड्स हाइड्रोजन्स हेलोजन्स रिएक्टिविटी टूवर्ड्स हेलोजन्स द प्रोडक्ट दस ऑप्टेन is boiled with hcl and filtered when k2o or mgo dissolves leaving behind elemental boron guys right it is thoroughly washed to remove hcl and then dried and then dried finally brown amorphous powder of boron is obtained in this way guys right so this is what we have been talking about right so reactivity towards halogens guys this is what we are talking about extraction of boron right this we are still talking about extraction of boron this should be cut out from over here right the product thus obtained is boiled with hcl and filtered when k2o or mgo dissolves leaving behind elemental boron right so the product of thus obtained is boiled with hcl filtered when k2o or mgo dissolves leaving behind elemental boron right boiled with hcl so when you obtain right boron and mgo guys in the last step right we saw in the extraction right boron and mgo was obtained you first boil it with hcl then filter it with uh, k2o or mgo right it dissolves leaving behind elemental boron it dissolves leaving behind elemental boron it is then thoroughly washed to remove hcl and then dried finally brown amorphous powder powder of boron is obtained in this way right so amorphous boron guys amorphous boron is brown in color guys right it is brown in color i hope you understood this guys next up from potassium fluoroborate right so kbf4 is potassium fluoroborate right by heating it with potassium metal right when you heat this with potassium metal guys again this is obtained it it is then treated with dilute hcl so it is again treated with dilute hcl to remove kbf and then boron is finally washed Uh, a way to, to remove any hcl impurities and then dried back again right and then again a brown amorphous water of b will be obtained obtained in this way right i hope you understood this guys in small quantities in pure form crystalline boron is obtained guys right reduction of bbr3 right in small quantities in pure form crystalline boron is obtained 
I hope you have understood this guys, reduction of BBR3 with H2 on a heated titanium metal filament at this temperature, the vapors of BR2 are absorbed in C Cu, right? And then the residual vapors of boron are condensed, right? So reduction of BBR3 we are talking about over here with H2, right? On heated titanium metal, right? On heated titanium metal filament, at this temperature guys right the vapors of br2 are absorbed in cu right and the residual vapors of boron right boron vapors are obtained which are then condensed right boron vapors are condensed to give the boron right to give the boron non-metal guys right i hope you've understood this guys right next up guys decomposition of bi3 vapors right by means of high tension arc through tungsten electrodes, right? So guys, uh, this is an electrolytic method. So BI3, right, vapors by means of high tension arc through tungsten electrodes, guys, this is passed and again boron will be uh, obtained. Guys, this you should remember as the Van Arkel method, right? This you should remember as the Van Arkel method. I hope you've understood this, guys, right? This Van Arkel method is important. Apart from that, guys uh, this preparation like this extraction guys using borax is important guys right this borax extraction is important potassium fluoroborate is important kbf4 because it's very very simple you just treat it with potassium metal and it's very easily removed right and then dilute hcl is used to remove kf right and then b is washed and finally dried right what is the color of boron it's brown in color moving on guys the properties if you are talking about right it exists in five forms four of which are crystalline and one is amorphous right the crystalline forms are very hard made up of b12 units right uh, the crystalline forms are very hard made up of b12 units all crystalline forms are black in appearance right crystalline forms are black in appearance and chemically inert right crystalline forms are black in appearance and chemically inert right amorphous form as we've discussed before is brown in color right amorphous is brown in color and it is chemically active guys right amorphous form is chemically active we have seen that amorphous form is the only form that gives reaction right crystalline form do, does not give reactions guys right? of boron if you are talking about right reduction with air again if you take the amorphous form right treat it with air at 700 degrees centigrade this will be formed b2o3 guys right the temperature you have to provide is very very high right if you treat it with n2 guys this nitride will be formed as we've seen before right then when this nitride is hydri hydrolyzed at very high temperatures guys h3bo3 and nh3 will be produced and similarly guys b2o3 because it is the anhydrous oxide when it is treated with h2o it will again give the same thing guys right h3bo3 i hope you've understood this guys and i'll move on to the next thing action of alkalis and acids right to be right boron when treated with naoh in uh, in the presence of water guys this gives you nabo2 right this is what you have to know right so basically guys boron is converted to nabo2 right then when boron is treated with an acid guys then h3bo3 will be formed right boric acid will be formed and so2 will be replated right when it's again treated with nitric acid then again boric so basically these also act as oxidizing agents as you can see the the oxidation number is increasing right reaction with mg and ca guys they form this so because they are non metallic in nature they form covalent bonds right so with mg guys they show this sort of a tendency mg b3 b2 on consequent on consequent hydrolysis gives diborane right so guys when mb3 so this is one of the very important preparation mechanisms of uh, b2h6 b2h6 guys is diborane right so to prepare diborane so one of the things we've already seen one of the very important boron compounds which is uh, our uh, borax and now we're talking about diborane so when mg3 b2 guys right is hydrolyzed right in the presence of acid guys it gives you b2h6 right diborane right when this diborane is treated with water it gives you hydroboric acid guys right 
Reducing properties, guys. Uh, this boron acts as a reducing agent, right? For example, SiO2, right? SiO2 it is able to oxidize carbon CO2. It is able to oxidize to give B two B two O three and car and carbon dioxide. It is able to oxidize to give B two O three and three C, right? It is decomposed. It decomposes steam liberating hydrogen gas, right? It decomposes steam liberating hydrogen gas. I hope you've understood all this. right and i'll move on to the next thing guys talking about the uses boron is used in the construction construction of high impact resident resistant steel and since it absorbs neutrons in reactors rods for controlling atomic reactions guys right so it's used in as an neutron absorber in uh, atomic reactions guys in in a nuclear power plant right and high impact resistant steel right uh compounds of boron guys we'll be talking about right first of all is boron trioxide right we've seen so b2o3 is important boron trioxide right then guys what is important is uh borax right borax which is a sodium and uh, which is which is a compound formed with sodium boron and oxygen borax and then diborane which we've already talked about which was b2h6 guys right so we'll discuss all of them in the next class guys right uh, so some there are properties for example if you're talking about boron trioxide we'll discuss all the properties over here right ortho boric acid which is h3bo3 is imp another important thing right this ortho boric acid is we've already seen right b2o3 acts as a anhydrous oxide for this h3bo3 right we'll talk about this we'll talk about its properties right the complexes it forms right uh, the borate radical we'll be testing for right the, what is the borate borate radical we'll be testing about the, that then comes a very important topic of uh, borax guys right so first the preparation reaction of borax which is na2b4o7 guys which is very important right and then borax the properties it is a white white powder and so forth when action of heat is applied right on on borax and so forth borax beat test is very very important guys you must have already heard about borax beat test it's very very important right uh it's uses right then diborane guys and so forth so guys uh, there is a lot to cover in p block elements guys right uh, when we are done with p block then we'll move to d and s block also right there's a there's a vast i mean uh, topic right so s p d and f right so p block d block f block right the s block you have already been studying from your earlier classes right so you know a lot about it but p block d block f block is something that is very very difficult there is a lot of learning involved in inorganic chemistry guys right in inorganic chemistry guys uh, unlike in physical and organic chemistry guys there is a lot of learning involved so you'll have to learn right for example let's say crystalline boron does not you know is it's inert in nature whereas uh, amorphous boron which is brown in color right it gives it reacts right it it's not chemically inert it, it reacts with certain things right what is the temperature rea required for preparing pre uh, preparation of b2o3 guys so when boron is oxidized right uh, let's say with uh, hno3 or something right a temperature of about uh, 600 700 degrees centigrade very high temperature is required guys right uh, same aluminum for example aluminum trioxide al2o3 alumina that that we know right it forms a protective layer and prevents you know further oxidizing of aluminum right so all this is very very important please take a note of this right uh, whatever the screen i mean uh, pause the video take screenshots right and try to remember all these things right the more you try to remember all these things right for example you can stick it on your wall right try to memorize it the more you memorize it in inorganic chemistry the the better it will be for you guys right so uh, please do your due diligence and i'll see you in the next class